So in this video, I want to talk about how Russians really think about what's going on in the war in Ukraine. And I have to give a caveat and then a caveat and then a caveat because first, all Russians aren't monolithic. Um, you can't just say all Russians think this. They don't. Then there are Russians who are outside of Russia or are pro-Ukrainian who have a different perspective altogether. And I really feel bad for Russians who, just because they're Russian, uh, are tarred with um, whatever Putin is doing because they don't have anything to do with it, nor would they approve of it. And I had a student a number of years ago who was from Iran, and when uh, the U.S. had had some issues with Iran, she would tell people she's Persian. Well, she was telling the truth, but she was trying to mask where she was from because it was somewhat embarrassing. So I feel bad for those kind of Russians that like, look, I don't want to have anything to do with this. This is wrong. I, I don't, right? Uh, and then there are Russians that in Vlad Vexler's um, description are just apolitical or depoliticized and they don't want to have anything to do with this and because look I shouldn't be involved in government because they've been programmed for years that don't be involved in government you can have your deal you can have your stuff but if you get political then we have a problem and then there are Russians and this is the category that I'm going to be talking about those Russians that are actually paying attention to what's going on or reading the propaganda or listening to the propaganda and this is how they think about Ukraine now I want to start with this. This is uh, the Levada Center uh, is a independent pollster in Russia. Levada sees 75% of Russians supporting the war, and that didn't change from 80%. And that's basically from March to the following year, to January of the following year. A further poll show, and here is... Let's translate this to English. Further polling shows that the level of attention to Ukrainian events remains at the level of the last two months. This is in June of this year. Um, and uh, for the actions of the Russian armed forces, it's also practically not changed. It remains high at a high level. So it, it's basically stayed pretty high support for Russia. So I was asking, I was thinking to myself the other day, so when Moscow comes under a drone attack by the Ukrainians, how did ordinary Russians process this? At least the ones that are willing to engage, right? So this is not a scientific sample, like a you know a study of a, a neutral sample of what's going on across the country. I, I don't have access to that. What I do have access to, though, is so here's RT. Moscow comes under attempted drone attack. And then here's another article. Ukrainian drone attack on Moscow is an international terrorism, says the foreign ministry. That's what Maria Zakharova said. It's an an act of international terrorism and TASS is reporting that several UAV fragments were found in this area. I like how they described it. Several fragments were found as if it was shot down rather than that the drones actually ran into something. Even if it wasn't their intended targets, they were fragments only because it was only diverted, not actually blown up. But here is the article that I want to use, um, and I'm going to read some of the comments. So here's ex-Russian president suggests surprise response to Ukrainian drone attacks. Now, this is Medyev, who is just I mean, nuts, the things that Medyev says. He's a former president of Russia, and he just says the craziest things. Medyev, who currently serves as deputy chairman of Russia's Security Council, wrote on Telegram on Monday that Ukraine was starved of any military success and needed to score, quote, informational wins, even if bogus and bloated. So that's why they were doing this. Ukraine was doing this for informational wins because they are losing on the battlefield. That's why the Ukrainian Nazis and the population recruited by them also find strikes on on civilian facilities acceptable. That's coming from Russia, who just struck uh, the Odessa, the Odessa church ad inadvertently or intentionally. The uh, grain silos, the ports, and all this other civilian infrastructure, including residential uh, places, uh, playgrounds, a cemetery. Medyev said he also claimed that there are rising concerns among Ukrainian public and cited impatience of Kiev's Western masters. This is another standard uh, trope coming from RT for battlefield victories. Therefore, the Banderites increasingly choose peaceful civilian targets for their vile attacks, and everyone should be ready for this, Medyev warned. We need to choose non-typical targets for our strikes, not only warehouses, energy hubs, oil bases. There are other places where they are not expecting us yet and where the effect will be very significant. So that's what he says in this article. So my question was, how would the people of Russia respond to this? Now, I know it's not just people of Russia. 
There are people outside Russia who are supporting Russia. But how do pro-Russian people reply or think about this? So we're going to go look at the comments. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to look over two dozen or so comments. Okay, so I'm just going to go through the comments, and I've already highlighted a number of comments that I want to uh, show you because they were interesting. Again, some of these are Russian, some of these are Russian sympathizers from somewhere else. And so the first one is clearly that, a sympathizer from somewhere else. It says, Ukrainians are war criminals at the point of the game. Why are we, West, still supplying them arms? Okay, so beyond the grammar, which is terrible, um, it's it's an interesting point, and that is what Russia wants pro-Russian Westerners to be thinking, the exact thing that they want them to be thinking, which tells me that their propaganda is working. Railways, bridges, roads, and airfields, these are the big, best targets. Cause massive bottlenecks where Ukrainian forces jam up. That's actually a great point. I mean, I don't want that to happen, but if you're thinking strategically, this is actually a very correct way of approaching this. This is what the Ukrainians just did to the Russians with the Kerch Bridge. It caused big jams by making it hard for them to use the Kerch, so now they have to use the alternative means. Stop playing around. Take out Zelensky and his immediate circle. Well, if they could have done that, I'm pretty sure they would have done that before, but they haven't been able to. Okay, next, I wish Medyev had given some examples of possible surprise targets. Maybe Zelensky's bedroom would create an adequate surprise. Okay, well, I think getting there would be pretty difficult at this stage. Okay, Russia should put in place harsh retaliatory measures for those targeting civilians. I mean, I'm not sure what they're going to do that's a harsher response than what they already have done. Civilian on both sides of the field should not be subject to target. That's fair. But they're not saying anything about what the Russians are doing right now to Odessa and to the Danube and all these port infrastructure places that are civilian targets. The, the cemetery, the kindergarten, the uh, residential buildings, they're not saying anything about that. Now, it's my guess that they're not saying anything because they're not really hearing about that. But this is where they are. But if this continues, Russia needs to be more rapidly engaged. Wow, this is the way that Russians are thinking when they're tuned in to this kind of thing. If I were Putin, I'd strike more harder. Again, where does that tell you where they're thinking? The brave Russian forces with their superior means have within their right to pummel Ukraine mercilessly wherever it matters most. The Bandera bleepers should be roasted alive. This is what average people on this platform are saying. What about railway stations and tracks, especially those in the borders of Poland and Romania? That's where all the weapons hardware from the West comes through. Okay, so if they're talking about just outside the borders in Ukraine, that's actually pretty smart. If they're talking about trying to in hit inside Poland and hit inside Romania, we're talking World War III. It's a bad idea. Next, Medyev is, of course, correct. Bomb Kiev into rubble for starters. Wow. Russia used to be known for being cold and ruthless, which kept this kind of thing from happening. Unfortunately, that has gone by the wayside in favor of capitulation and zero respect. There, will, there comes a time when cold and ruthless is the only way to maintain any level of respect. Thus, you can bargain from a position of strength and intimidation. I think this perfectly summarizes what Russia's propaganda has been trying to project to its population for, a, for quite some time now. And this is the way that it seems that leaders within Russia are thinking. Now, I don't see that they're not being cold and ruthless. In fact, they are being very cold and ruthless. But their solution when things go wrong is to apply more of the cold, cold and ruthlessness rather than to say, hmm, I wonder if this was a good idea to do this thing in the first place. Okay, White German Shepherd says it may be time to unleash the newly minted rogue Wagner military units to go after those decision-making centers skulking behind the skirts of NATO. So what they're saying is that Wagner, which is no longer associated with Russia, is a rogue unit. And if they go into NATO, you can't really blame Russia for what whatever Wagner does. And so they're seeing a conspiracy in what's going on with Wagner's revolt and then being dismissed into Belarus. It was clever to publicly alienate Wagner's group from Russia and then have them run off to Belarus. Now Russia has its own proxy vanguard while the main force of the Russian military plays defense. Brilliant move. 
That's the way somebody here on RT is analyzing what happened with Wagner. Now, I don't know that that's the case or that's what's going on, but that's the way they're thinking about it. Wagner, the real global anti-terror army. Oh, <laughs> I mean, it's just, it's, it, it would be funny if it wasn't actually so sad. Okay, just flatten the place, give five hours notice, and blow the place to bits. Then do the same in the next town in case they send another drone. Okay, that's how they're thinking. Another one. President Putin shows more restraint and patience than Mr. Medyev, but I'm on Mr. Medyev's side on this one. In fact, if I was President Putin, when UK announced transfer of long-range missiles and armor-piercing rounds containing depleted uranium, I would send the, them this message. If we find evidence that Britain sent Ukrainian tank shells and long-range missiles, civilians of Britain would have 15 days to leave the island and save themselves because after that it will be destroyed completely. Well, this is what was being said on RT time after time after time. And I can show you the video footage where they, they show these graphics of missiles descending on Britain and then the island just disappearing. So they're absorbing it. The U.S. is fully capable of replacing the clown puppet Zelensky with another clown puppet within 24 hours or less. Okay, let's stop there. That's important, this particular line, because that is the Russian state media propaganda perspective that it's the U.S. that's installed Zelensky and they'll find some other puppet to do their bidding later on. Maybe do it when he's having a grifters meeting dividing up the latest suitcase of cash aid from U.S. taxpayers. Again, this is still Russian talking points and they're just parroting it. It's okay not to pay, says Conquer Odessa, bomb Kiev Nazi headquarters, use tactical nuclear weapons, use FOABS, that's father of all bombs, use drones to deliver mass amounts of Chinese fentanyl. Well, that Chinese fentanyl line was something I've never heard before, but okay. So essentially just destroy them and here with the uh, US flag and the Capitol building on fire in the background. The Russian Federation is winning on all fronts. The EU is crippled. NATO are weakened. The US can't lie about their economy. And Ukraine are now the poorest country in the world. Special military operation has achieved its goals. P.S. Zelensky will be killed soon. I mean, this is like a catalog of Russian talking points. Next, Russian Federation should cripple, crippling is the best definition, daily life of Ukrainians in all aspects and means available. This for sure will shorten their sufferings. Russia will not be blamed more than she actually is. Ukrainians should understand that Kyiv regime is killing them for US-led collective West ends. Wake up, Ukrainian people. Well, if that was the case, all that Ukraine would have to do is say, United States and NATO, please stop supplying us anything. We don't want to be your puppets any longer. We'll take it from here. But that's not what Ukraine's doing. Ukraine is saying, please give us these weapons so that we can defend against them because they're the bad guys and we want to stop them. So, but this is the way that it's spread in Russian propaganda. Okay, next, I predict that the Western mainstream media will be going into overdrive as of now. When you see the Western mainstream media being the target of um, the wrath of whoever it is that's talking, it's very often replaced with RT and Russian state media talking points. Drop the nukes on Zleek's bunker. Okay. DC would be a good one. Wow. They're talking about not just nuking Zelensky, but going after DC as well. There's a pretty anti-American sentiment, and you can see that tracked in the polls. Now, this one is absolutely fascinating because it inadvertently slaps at the Russian military while it's praising what Medyev said. Dmitry Medyev now did a quick study of military leadership and planning and instantly became more knowledgeable than the Russian generals. I'm impressed by him. Wow. Here's another one. If the CIA thinks that terrorist attacks on Moscow or civilians elsewhere will trigger protests against the war or against Putin, they are sadly mistaken. Who said the CIA was involved? But this is a common Russian talking point. Russian citizens will support Putin and their armed forces even more. This stunt will fail to achieve its political objectives and has no military value except short-lived propaganda. 
So that's just really bizarre. And it's almost as if we're talking about two totally different events and we're not even talking about the same thing. But I can tell you that what they've said have been repeating the kinds of things that I've been reading for months on end in in Russian state media. Russian state media has said this and these people have absorbed this. Now, there could be bots here. So it could be just more Russian state media. But let's assume just for a moment that these are real people that are posting on RT after reading this. It's kind of scary what they actually believe. Now, how much of the population believes it? I can't really tell you. This is not a scientific sample. But those that are politically awake, there's at least a fraction of the country that is just imbibing this kind of thing and soaking it in. Okay, that's what these Russians really think. So tell me what you think about what you just saw here. I'm curious to hear your view. Thank you for your time. Thank you for the likes, the shares, the subscribes, the coffees, and thank you more than anything else for being the kind of person that cares about Ukraine.